Okay, we're going to finish up the unit by talking about uh, equilibrium GDP and full employment GDP. Um, the unit's been very mathematical and it's going to continue to be so here. Um, I promise you it gets more conceptual and more applicable to what actually happens as we go along. Here we're just building the DNA of this machine that we're going to call the economy. All right, so here's the formula again, and now it's in your soul, so just you can shut your eyes and still see it, right? You want to get to that point. We're going to take all the spending, the right side of that formula, by everyone who does it, consumers, businesses, government, net exports. And we're going to call that aggregate expenditures, total spending, uh, abbreviated AE. Aggregate means total, expenditures means spending. And in our model, um, according to the formula, what is going to happen is that equilibrium is going to occur where spending is equal to GDP, where we buy or we're willing to spend exactly the amount of money that it takes to purchase the amount of goods and services that are produced. Um, and just like any other equilibrium, it's kind of like a resting point. It's what's going to happen to the economy. And that's important. Equilibrium doesn't mean good or bad. It just means what's going to happen. Um, and this is how our model is going to get to what we know about our economy and how we might predict how the economy is going to work and how we might actually manipulate it. So we're going to contrast equilibrium GDP, what's going to happen, with what we're going to consider to be what we want to happen, and that's full employment GDP. Full employment GDP, you can think of as the amount of stuff that would be produced, the amount of GDP that would be produced, if we had full employment. And remember what that means. It doesn't mean everyone's working. We still have about 5% unemployment. The structural and the frictional are always going to be unemployed. Um, but we have full employment. Imagine we have full employment, and then imagine measuring the amount of stuff produced under those circumstances. That's what full employment GDP is. And the idea is that equilibrium doesn't always happen there. Um, sometimes it happens at too low or too high levels. And the government might do things to move us to this right level that we're going to call full employment GDP. So let's start off with the um, possibility that aggregate expenditures, the amount of spending that people do, is insufficient to buy the amount of stuff that would be produced if we had full employment. What that means is that there's not enough spending to buy all the stuff that's made. And if you think back to microeconomics, you can make an analogy to surpluses, when the quantity supplied was greater than the quantity demanded. Those businesses are going to see their inventories start to rise. If too much stuff is being made, if people aren't buying the amount of stuff that's being produced, boxes are going to start piling up in the warehouses of these businesses. And after a while, they're going to say to themselves, hey, you know, if people aren't buying what we're making now, we probably don't need as many people making it. And that's when layoffs start happening. And that's what starts looking like a recession. So we call that a recessionary gap. If spending is in insufficient to purchase what could be produced at full employment. The opposite situation happens when spending exceeds the amount of stuff that's being produced, when there's too much uh, spending chasing after too few goods. You can make the analogy back to microeconomics there again. It's kind of like a shortage when the quantity demanded was greater than the quantity supplied. And you'll remember that those invisible hand forces pushed prices up. Well, on a, nation, uh, on a nationwide scale, we're going to call that inflation. And we call it an inflationary gap when aggregate expenditures exceeds full employment GDP. So here's an example, and you might want to take out a calculator and see if you could work your way through it. Let's say that full employment GDP is 800 billion, right? That's what GDP would be if we had full employment, and that's what we want for an economy, full employment. But let's say equilibrium is happening at too low a level. Let's say equilibrium GDP is happening at only 600 billion. If we're the government and we want to get us up to full employment GDP, we want to move from 600 to 800, we could do something about that. We could spend money. And if we know something about MPC, we could figure out how much money to spend. So see if you can figure out how much money they'd have to spend to get us to full employment. Give you a little hint. 
it's not 200 billion because you have to remember the multiplier. All right, here's the solution. Change in GDP is equal to the multiplier times the initial change in spending. The change in GDP we want is 200 billion. We know that MPC is 0.75, so we plug that into the spending multiplier formula. And we're solving for that initial change in spending. 200 billion is equal to 4 times that change in spending. That initial change in spending would have to be $50 billion. If the government spent $50 billion, it would go through the multiplier process, and it would raise GDP up eventually by a multiple of 4. Um, so GDP would rise by $200 billion to that $800 billion level. So we would call that $50 billion a recessionary gap. The amount of money that's not being spent that would have to be spent to get us to full employment. And again, here, if the government spent $50 billion, we can get GDP to go up by 200 once it got multiplied to that full employment level of $800 billion. <clears throat> Here's one more example. Let's say full employment GDP is $500 billion, um, but equilibrium GDP is happening at a really high level, let's say $900. Let's say we're the government and we want to get GDP down to that full employment level because we want to avoid inflation. Same kind of problem. If we know what MPC is, how much money should we cut spending? And remember, we have to think about multipliers here, so the answer is not going to be $400 billion. Here's the solution, our formula. We want GDP to go down by $400 billion. We know what the multiplier is going to be. 1 divided by 1 minus MPC. MPC is 0.75. We're solving for that initial change in spending. Spending would have to go down by $100 billion. It would get multiplied four times, which would turn into a $400, $400 billion decrease in GDP. So here again, the terminology. We would call it an inflationary gap. There was $100 billion too much in spending going on, and if someone spent $100 billion less, once that multiplier effect happened in reverse, GDP would drop by $400 billion, and we'd get to the full employment level of $500 billion. And by the way, they would avoid inflation, and we'll see how that's possible in the next unit. All right, you finished up the unit. Congratulations. Um, it was a hardcore unit mathematically. I realized that. Um, and again, it gets less mathematical. I think more interesting, you just were in the weeds there. I'm just telling you that. So if you felt like you were in the weeds, that's okay. We're going to come out of the weeds soon. Um, but you have to see what the weeds look like. All right. Well, that was a waste of time. Jamie, school is never a waste of time. Since we have 15 minutes until recess, please put down your pencils and stare at the front of the room.